بسم الله والحمد لله والصلاة والسلام على رسول الله وعلى آله وصحبه أجمعين. We had a great evening and alhamdulillah we cracked a few jokes, we had a quiz, we had the opportunity to donate and we donated to good causes starting with Gaza, Lebanon and so many other places all for the sake of Allah. Beautiful crowd, lovely brothers and sisters seated here. And wallahi, it is so beautiful in this particular venue in Birmingham. Alhamdulillah. My brothers and sisters, Allah has favored us with so many favors. I've been speaking about the favors of Allah because in the Quran, He says, If you are going to count the favors of Allah on you, you will not be able to count them all. So the biggest favor is the fact that he's guided us towards him. We are believers. We believe in our maker. We worship him alone. We are part of the ummah of Nabi Muhammad sallallahu alayhi wa sallam. That's the biggest favor. Allah has guided you. In fact, the dua or supplication that is repeated the most on earth. Does anyone know it? A dua or a supplication that is repeated billions of times a day on earth. What is the dua? Ihdina sirat al mustaqim, sirat al ladina an'amta alayhim. The dua that's repeated the most is Ihdina sirat al mustaqim, guide us to the straight path. Why? In every unit of your prayer, you read Surah Al-Fatiha. And in that Surah, the Dua is all about, Oh, our Lord, guide us to the straight path. So that would mean that the biggest favor of Allah upon you ever would be guidance to the straight path. That's why I say, you want to count the favors of Allah, start off by saying, He's guided me. Allahu Akbar. Allahu Akbar. Thereafter, there are so many other favors. Yesterday, I spoke about a favor of Allah while we were in Gloucester. And I mentioned repentance, forgiveness, seeking the forgiveness of Allah. He's favored us by allowing us to say, I'm sorry, I was wrong, forgive me. And him in return becoming happy and saying to us, I have forgiven you and saying to us, if you change your ways and habits that were bad and negative and become a better person, I will convert the bad that you did into good on the scale of the day of judgment that's a favor of Allah imagine if you were not allowed to say I'm sorry I mean they do that to us a lot if you've over speeding if you were over speeding and they give you a fine you can't just go and say I'm sorry <laughs> they will multiply that fine right people don't accept it I'm sorry you can't just apologize for anything and everything but at times you find that certain people will accept an apology depending on what you did and depending on who they are too with Allah he says there is no case and no way that someone repents to me from anything they've done no matter what it was and I don't forgive them for as long as they were sincere there's no chance no matter what you've done Allah says for as long as you've apologized and for as long as you've sought forgiveness I will always forgive you no matter what even from shirk what is shirk when you associate partners with Allah it's the highest sin the biggest sin that you could commit in Islam we are taught that it is association of partnership with Allah but Allah says if you're alive and you're breathing and you're okay and you seek forgiveness from it I will still forgive you the only time that forgiveness Allah says he won't do it is for a person who died without seeking forgiveness so if you and I had to pass away may Allah grant us a good death at a time when he's pleased with us Amen. 
If we were to pass away, the things we sought forgiveness for would have been wiped out already. When we repeat the tawbah or repeat the repentance, it's not because we are doubting that Allah has or has not forgiven us, but rather it is out of us being shy or ashamed or repetition just to confirm. You actually achieve a higher rank, but the forgiveness happened the first time you asked Allah's forgiveness. Say someone committed adultery and they committed this major sin and they regretted it. Regret is a sign of belief. You will only regret if you have a connection with Allah. If you don't have a connection with Allah, there's no regret. You regret it because you know, I shouldn't have done this. I made a mistake. The minute you say, oh Allah, forgive me. I was wrong. Help me not to do this again. I promise. Allah says, you're forgiven. What did he? you just commit? A major sin. You're forgiven. But now, a day later, two days later, what happens? Shaitan comes to you and says, you're not forgiven. So you say, oh Allah, forgive me. Forgive me. I know you are most forgiving. Forgive me. We are asking the forgiveness of Allah. It should never be because we are doubting whether we were forgiven or not. No. No. We were forgiven. But it is only because we want to repeat it because repetition is good. It keeps reminding us, I did something wrong. Allah has blessed me by helping me and guiding me towards seeking forgiveness. Allah changes your life. When a person's been leading their entire lives away from Allah and one day they come in and they say, I bear witness that you are my Lord. Allah says, I love this so much. I delete all the bad you've ever done in the past. When you say, I bear witness, there is none worthy of worship but Allah. What are you doing? You're saying a shahada. Ashhadu an la ilaha illallah wa ashhadu anna muhammadan rasulullah. I bear witness there is none worthy of worship besides Allah. I bear witness that Muhammad, peace be upon him, is his messenger or his worshipper, his slave. Inna al Islam yajubbu ma qabla. The hadith says, when you enter the fold of Islam, it deletes everything bad or negative or sinful that you did before that point. It's wiped out. So a young guy came to me once and you might have heard me say this before and he tells me, I feel like exiting Islam and coming back to Islam. It didn't make sense. I'm trying to think, why would he say this? So I asked him, why? Why do you want to leave and come back? And he said, because when I hear of the virtue of a person who's come to Islam, I feel I'm a born Muslim, I did wrong, I seek the forgiveness of Allah, but I want to be pure, I want to be a person whom the past is deleted for them. So if I go out and come back in, perhaps I'll start off with a new leaf. I'll have turned over a new leaf. Are you understanding what he's trying to say? I said, listen, my son, I looked at him and I felt his pain. I felt his pain and I felt the seriousness of him turning to Allah. I said, do you know that when you engage in sincere repentance, you get exactly the same reward? You seek forgiveness. It will wipe out whatever happened before it. You turn back to Allah. It is as though you did not commit the sin. When you repent from a sin, you become equivalent to the one who did not commit the sin. So one might ask, well then what's the point? I rather just commit sin and say, oh Allah, forgive me. Because if I am the same as a person who's never committed a sin, let me tell you. A bonus that a person who's steadfast would get is something that Allah alone will reward. When I come with my good deed on the day of judgment, Allah will multiply it. Whoever comes with a good deed on the day of judgment and you brought it, say for example, I'm picturing a man with a sack and all his good deeds in the sack. I'm just picturing it, right? It's not going to be the case, but obviously. But imagine he comes and he puts forth the sack and opens it all bare. And he he's come, he reached here. 
And now that he's reached here, we're going to treat him differently. The same applies to you and I. If you make it to the day of judgment with your good deed, that's when Allah says, I will now multiply it for you. Why? Because it's very difficult to keep a good deed once you've engaged in it. We gave our charities. Mashallah, we gave thousands. Alhamdulillah.